Hey everybody, it's Peter. Welcome to my ugly garage. If you're watching this video, here's what I hope that you'll find by the time you're through this entire video. We're going to talk about the best value EV charger that I, or EV home charger that I think is out there and why I think it's the best value, but why it may not be the best value for you. We're also going to make sense of level one, level two, and level three charging because I think a lot of people are kind of confused about it, or even if you're not confused, I think there's a lot of misinformation around those. So we're going to talk about that, try to make it make sense to you so that you're ready to buy your EV, you're ready to buy your charger, and you're comfortable doing both of those things. Lots to cover. We're also going to talk about the differences between EVs and PHEVs and why a level one or level two charger may or may not work for you. So again, I'm going to go over a bunch of things. Let's get going. Really quick, jump in with the edit, guys. If any part of this video is helpful to you or you think it's important, do me a favor, guys. I'm building my channel. I've come from a channel with a whole bunch of subscribers. I now have none. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button if any of this is helpful. Let's jump back to the video. All right, level one, level two charging. First of all, we always refer to these as a level two charger, correct? Well, technically it's not. Uh, this box here, we're going to talk about it in a second about why I think it's good. This box is not actually a level two charger. Your car has the charger. So most of your um, regular EVs, PHEVs, this is a Kia one. They come with a sort of cord like this. And the big important thing is that's the plug it comes with. That is a level one plug. That is the same as your cell phone. And that can be thought of, I want you to sort of work with me on this analogy. It's not perfect, but I hope it helps you make sense. Think of this charger as a garden hose. Think of this charger as a fire hose. All it does is move electrons to the car the same way a hose moves water to whatever you've got it going out. So uh, on a hose, depending on your nozzle, if you've got set for full pressure or you've got set to trickle, that's what actually decides. So your car has the level one or level two and on full EVs, level three charging, they can even go sort of a supercharging or faster charging, something like the Kia EV6, the Ionic 5 from Hyundai, they can charge in as little as 18 minutes, zero to 80%. So let's first talk about that zero to 80% and then we'll get back to talking level to one. Zero to 80%. Think of it like pouring water into a cup. Now, I want to do this on video, but I was pretty sure I was going to spill. So when you pour water into a cup, you have to start kind of slow to kind of get calibrated, right? You want to hit the center of the cup. You don't want to spill around. So you start slow. It doesn't take too long to realize that you've calibrated yourself, and then you can pour full speed. But once you pour full speed, when you get to 80 or 90%, you've got to back off with your pouring of the water because the top part of the, of the cup is the hardest to fill, right? You don't you want to get it to 100%, but if you go over 100%, you're going to have problems. It's the exact same thing with batteries. It's going to start a little bit slow to get calibrated, then it's going to really ramp up to that 80%. Beyond 80%, and it can vary a little bit, it's going to slow down. So think of charging your vehicle exactly like that. If you charge it at 80 or 90% and you see this really long charge time and you say, why is that taking so long? It's because to fill that top part of the battery, you just kind of got to take it easy. You got to slow down. The car knows that. That's why it's going to take care of that for you. And that's how you think of charging. So with that water analogy, let's continue on. If this is a garden hose and this is a fire hose, most of your garden hose type level one chargers that come with your cars, they are going to be 12 amps. Uh, this one's 12 amps from the factory. Newer Kia and Hyundai vehicles, sometimes they're six amps from the factory. You do have to set that to 12 amps if you want it to charge a little faster on a level one charger. They're never gonna be fast with these, but these are completely usable. I've had a Kia Soul EV. I've charged exclusively off a level one charger for about three years before I went to a level two charger. So. Again, it can go up to 12 amps. That's the amount of pressure. And think about, again, as a garden hose. Sometimes you go to a neighbor's house, you turn on the tap and the pressure's okay. And then you come to your house and hey, it's fantastic. Or the other way around if you're me. Um, but that's, there's only so much pressure you can put through there. There's only so much power you can put through here. So should be 12 amps. That should be the default to most of these. Um, if it's set for six amps or even lower, eight amps, uh, six amps, something like that. You can usually speed them up to about 12 amps. This one here has a display telling you it's going to be 12 amps. Uh, other ones you have to kind of change. Um, the Jeep one that I have here, the level one charger that came with a Jeep Wrangler 4xe is a little thinner cord than this. Don't worry about that. They should all be running 12 amps. These bigger chargers, when you're buying one, what I've done, and this is what I recommend doing, is run a 50 amp wire. Now, some people will tell you you should run a bigger wire for future proofing and that kind of thing. Other people will say run a smaller wire. If you have the capacity in your panel to run a 50 amp wire, I think that's kind of the sweet spot. That's what you should do. If you don't have the capacity to run that wire, 
run a smaller wire, maybe a 40 amp, whatever you need. So this particular charger, even though it has a 50 amp wire or 50 amp sort of circuit running towards it, it only can charge 40 amps of that. That is the standard in electricity. So if you have a 40 amp wire, you're only gonna run say 30 or 32 amps or whatever that is. If you have a 30 amp wire, you're gonna run less amps again. A 50 amp circuit is a tr traditional plug. You're generally only gonna draw about 12 amps out of that. So that's why these are set for 12 amps. So always remember that the wire you have running towards your charger, again, not a charger, but the wire you have to running towards these boxes, has to be higher rated than what these boxes are for. Now this particular Grizzly charger, it can run 40 amps, it can run less than that. Uh, they're setting inside, they're defaulted to 40 amps. So running the 50 amp charger allows me to run 40 amps out of the charger itself. Uh, I've worked at a workplace in the past, you guys all know I worked at Brantford Key in the past, some of their chargers were set to 30 amps out of it. Uh, this one's set to 40. So that 30 to 40 amp makes a difference uh, in time wise. And that's why you wanna go with 50 amp wire or 50 amp circuit towards it uh, so that you can run 40 amps out of this box. So again, that allows this box to push um, 40 amps. Now what you find is when you're charging in the wild is they'll have all these chargers and all these apps will advertise these high speeds or you know a 40 amp or a 50 amp circuit or whatever it is and you get there and you're going, man, that's a pretty slow charge. And that's because they're splitting the charge and think of it like a hose again, just because it can run for instance, 40 amps, doesn't mean it will run 40 amps. In your house, you can control that better than you can in the wild. So having talked about all that, let's talk about this Grizzly charger. I think this is the best value level two charging system that you can get. It's not actually a level two charge, it's called an EVSE. The acronym does not matter. You can Google that or we'll talk about it in a separate video. But when you're shopping for one of these, the Grizzly I think is one of the best. There's a few things that I like about it. Let me just step out of frame for a second. When I have the, uh, oops. Oh boy, I'll show you what I did there in a second. So when I have this here, one of the things I looked for is a fairly thick cord. Thickness doesn't matter so much as the fact that this is a winter capable cord. So you wanna make sure that it's winter rated. With Grizzly's chargers, they're basically the same as you would find at a public charger station. You wanna make sure they're really durable, they don't get cuts or slits in it, and you wanna kinda of make sure they're good for the colder weather. Some of the colder weather ones can get really stiff. I don't know how this will react. It seems like it'll still stay fairly stiff in the winter and that can be problematic for some people. Uh, but the bigger thing is it's rated to get cold it's rated to have some pressure on it if the garage door has to be closed around it that kind of thing but you want to have a good winter rated cord and you want to have a fairly long cord and one of the keys that i see people do is they they get a really long cord on this this one's got about 24 feet on this one but then they mount the charger up at like eye height and i keep calling it a charger it doesn't matter but if you have a long cord and you need a long cord, mount it fairly low. You could mount this one lower. I could curl the cord up underneath and run this lower again. I don't need it any lower than this, but that gives me good length to run it out to where I need it. A couple other things to look for. The Grizzly does not have. This is a plastic um, handle here. If you have a rubberized handle, uh, if you dropped it, I think that would be more durable. But again, we're talking value here, not the best of the best of the best. Um, final thing I think you should look at. Well, there's a couple things. Some of these can be equipped with an app. If you have an app, um, that can help you charge the car, check the state of charge. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with that. At this point, I don't recommend getting that app for the value shopper. I think the app can sometimes have a lot of settings in there that confuse people. What I want in a charger is take it off the wall or off the rail, plug it in the car, and it works. The Grizzly is super simple. It's got one light. No on off button, no nothing. Um, sometimes you may want an on off button, but no nothing. Blue light means it's ready to go. Plug it in, flashing green means it's charging. Steady green means your vehicle's charged or it's reached the peak state. So if you set it to charge to 80% or 90%, it's reached that thing, it's stopped charging, but it's green. Uh, if there's a red light that flashes, there'll be a beeping sound, then you got a problem. Simple, simple, simple. I think what you want in a charger is simple unless you want all that extra features. And keep in mind, most modern EVs and PHEVs, they do have apps with a car where you can have some of that information as well. So for me, for value, get one without an app, get one that's capable of 40 amps, try to get a 50 amp circuit towards it. And if you're thinking about, will this save you money, that kind of thing, these are far more, far more about convenience than money savings. You do spend some money to install it. You do spend some money to uh, do this. Uh, they ran the wire from my house. I'm in the front corner of my house, diagonally opposite corners where my fuse panel is. Uh, it took them probably half an hour, hour to run the wire and get it done. It's not a massive job to install in many houses. Some houses are pre-wired for it as well. So that's the chargers. That's how they work. Now let's talk really quickly about EVs and PHEVs by taking a look at um, some differences that you may want to ask 
in that. Let's go there now. Real quick jump in with the edit. The Grizzly Charger has this great little function right here where you don't have to line it up perfectly. You can just clip it in there. What I'm gonna do to you is recommend that you don't use these clips in a garage like mine. I have spiders and dust and dirt and other kinds of things. And these things come with a cap for a reason. I think you wanna keep them capped. You don't want spiders or anything else to build nests in there because if you're like me, once you have a spider in there, you're gonna plug it into your car. And I haven't figured out a way to get it out of my car yet. So maybe once I do, I'll do that. But I don't want debris or anything getting in between here and my car that can cause faults and problems and everything else. So I recommend that you use the cap, which means you can't use this and that you hang it on a hose reel instead. This is super convenient though for a really quick plug. You can just jam it in there. It can hang left, right. Like you don't have to line up perfectly. And when I'm switching between charging between one car and the other, you set this off the ground and it's super simple without having to wind it up or worry about falling. So it's nice to have something secure like that, but it's not something I recommend storing it there. Now, let's talk about this cap in one second as we move to the vehicle. All right, moving to the vehicle, you wanna do a couple things. Obviously pop the gas door open. On the Kia Soul EV, you have this little plug here. You can put it down there. If you have a level three charger, you're gonna to need to pull this one out as well and plug the larger nozzle in there. We're not doing that at a public charging station, so we're just level two charging or level one charging. You've got this cap. This one can sit there. I'm gonna leave it here and I'll show you why. When you get your uh, charge plug, remember we said to have this cap? Well, again, if you're charging outside here and you have that cap, first of all, plug the car in first. You hear the click. And what I like to do is set the cap on there, again, to keep debris out of this. Once you plug it in, the car should make a clicking sound. It should start to charge. This one is fully charged, which is why we don't have uh, any noise uh, happening right now. So plug it in, make sure it clicks, and make sure the car has started charging. That's the most important thing I tell everybody. If it hasn't, maybe you've scheduled your charge. Uh, maybe the car is already full. Maybe they have a problem with the charger. There's a number of things to check, but always, never just plug it in and leave. Plug it in, make sure the car started charging, and then you can leave. Now, let's talk EVs and PHEVs. All right, charging an EV versus a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. In the past, when I worked for the Kia Hyundai channel at Brantford Kia, I always said if you buy an EV, just get the level two charger because the thinking was with a EV, you want some faster charge times because if you run out of fuel or run out of electricity, you're done. Whereas a PHEV, you've always got gasoline engine. It's not the end of the world if you run out. You can always zip out when you need to. I've changed my opinion on that and it's not really based on value, but you could make the value equation. First of all, an EV is fully capable of charging a level one charging for a lot of people. This car has a 250 kilometer range. It's a very short range EV for the in-town driving that we traditionally do with this vehicle. A level one charging works fine. It takes 30 hours to go from basically roughly empty to full in this car um, on a level one charge. But, you know, 12 hour charge one night, 12 hour charge another night. For most people's day to day running around, level one charger works completely fine. And if I had to charge two at a time, two EVs at a time, you take the car you drive less, you put that into the regular uh, 110 out volt outlet, level one charging, and you take a second EV and you put that on the fast charger. The reality is, if you have a fast charger, you really don't need to charge this car much. Even at level one charging, we didn't charge it every day. Uh, level two charging, we charge once a week, twice a week. But really what happens with the level two charger is this car yesterday came home and it was almost out of charge. It was very low, 15%, whatever you want to call it. And we wanted to go out that evening. So during dinner, we added an hour of charge. Actually, it was probably about two hours before we ended up going out again. Two hours of charge is a third of the charge on this car. It's basically about 100 kilometers. Now, range and numbers can vary a lot, but a level two charger allows you to treat it like a regular gas car for most people. You come home, you get fast enough charging that it just works. PHEVs, I now recommend you get a level two charger. It may be a money-saving thing for you, and I'll give you an example of that. I have a Jeep Wrangler 4xe that I've been using lately. It's only got like 35 to 42 kilometers of electric range in the Rubicon model. That's not a lot, but a level two charger allows me to go out for 30 kilometers, come back for a couple hours, go out for 30 kilometers, come back for a couple hours, go out for 30, 35 kilometers, come back for a couple hours, and I can get close to 100 kilometers of range on pure electric because I can charge it. The Wrangler 4xe is 12 to 13 hours on a level one charge, but it's about two hours and sometimes less than that on a level uh, two charge. So for convenience sake, a PHEV should be plugged in every single time you come home. This car, the full EV, we don't charge unless we kind of get lower. And because we have the fast charger, we can actually afford to get it lower because there's never a situation where like, oh no, we've got to run out. We'll always have had enough charge. We can easily put charge quickly in this car. 
And uh, we've run into a couple times with a level one charger where you know you need 12 hours of charge and you only got six hours to go, and that's where you run into problems. Where a level two charger, you know what? We're going to go out in a couple hours and put an hour charge in the car and we're good to go. So level two charging on a PHEV makes sense because you can really expand that, um, that EV charging. But if you're a value shopper and you don't drive a lot, it may not make as much sense to go on a level two charger for a PHEV. I still think if you have a PHEV, if the car is parked, it's going to be charging. Whereas you have an EV, you're going to charge it once, twice, maybe three times a week tops. And a lot of time you're not going from empty to full. You're just putting an hour in here, a couple hours in there. So there is your full tutorial of what is EV level one and level two charging. What is um, a good value level two charger, PHEVs versus EVs. We've got a lot more coming up. I've got a cool little device right over here. This can tell you how much it costs to charge an EV. We could do a video on that if you guys are interested in that. Um, it's a cheap $22, $24 thing I got on Amazon, um, but you can set it up to have your kilowatt hour and all kinds of things, so we can do that. I'm gonna do an e-bike tutorial, a little shorter, a little quicker on that to help you with those. If you're interested in any of this stuff, subscribe, and thanks for watching.